Let's talk a bit about the optimal quantity of a public good uh, that ought to be provided. And our, we're going to find that our, our usual rule uh, that the optimum occurs at where marginal social cost equals marginal social value uh, will hold, uh, but in particular the marginal social value function can be quite problematic to determine. So we're going to talk about how theoretically one would determine that. Um, first a word on why government uh, might be the only entity uh, that, that can provide a sufficient quantity of a pure public good in particular. And, and this has to do with the free rider problem. And remember that a public good is both non-rival and non-excludable, um, but, but um, that, that non-excludability poses a problem. So, so because of the free rider, if you provide it, anybody can enjoy it whether or not they, they pay for it. So a free rider or a free ride is uh, getting something valuable without paying for it. And for a firm thinking about trying to make money supplying a good, well, if, it's, if, if the good isn't excludable, well, the people, how do you get people to pay for it? They can just enjoy the good because it's there and, and you know, it's, nat it's human nature to, if you can get the benefits without any cost, well, why would you voluntarily pay the cost? It's, it can be a real problem. Not that people sometimes don't volunteer, but, but you know, a lot of people don't and, and you end up falling short. Um, the other reason why government might need to get involved in, in the provision, the proper provision of a, of a good uh, whether it's a pure public good or just has public good nature or, or is a commons good, is this collective action problem. And, and we've seen in, in the case of fisheries and you know, public grazing, we've seen that the private market will use too much of the good. And, and we know that there's this better outcome for all of us if we can agree, if we can enforce agreements to limit our use. And that setting up the proper rules and, and then the enforcing those rules is, is a role that a government often plays. Um, this collective action problem happens when there exists, this backward E is for when there exists um, a superior outcome for the group if all can agree, that's supposed to be an E, uh, to it. So just the, if we could re limit fishers in a, in a commons, uh, commonly accessible uh, fishery, you, you know, everybody's better off. We have a sustainable catch, you know, over, over time, everyone's better off. Um, but everybody has an individual private incentive, the market would end up um, without some, some extra agreement. Uh, everybody would end up um, overusing the, uh, the good if, if they were left to their own private incentives. All right, anyway, so, so let's say we have this public good and the government's gonna provide it. Well, unlike a market where you know, you, firms produce it and if people don't buy it, they, they they don't buy it, and, and the firm producing something that's high cost and low value goes out of business. With the government, okay, the government decides to, to build it. They, they can compel people to buy it. Well, how, how does the government think about what's the right level to provide? And, and so that's the subject of this screencast. Well, first off, to think about the demand for a, a public good, we need to sum up uh, the individual valuations of the good but, but that, we're going to do that a little differently than we did for a private good. I'll, I'll leave you to look up the, the table, figure 14.1 where they, they remind you of how we summed across quantities produced to get to the mar market demand. Well, that, we summed across quantities produced because those goods were rival in consumption. We had to, to get market demand. Well, if you consumed a loaf of bread, we, you know, that, you, that would be yours. And then if I consumed it, one, then that would be mine. We'd add those two together. We'd, we'd sum across quantity. But... But when goods are non-rival, like, like say an, an uncrowded park, um, then you know, I can use the park, you can use the park, and, and 
you know, my use doesn't in any way uh, limit your use or, or reduce your enjoyment. Um, of course, if I were there, you know, it'd be more prestigious to be there, and it might even increase your enjoyment, of course. Uh, anyway, so, so we sum across valuations. We just aggregate the value that's being derived from the good, uh, and we, and, you know, if one uh, is provided, they everybody gets it. So we have this vertical summation. So, so here's the example in the text. Uh, notice that um, there's this is a simple case where there's just two users. This first one has this demand. The second person has this demand. And we're going to sum across valuations from 0 to 24. After 24, we only have this um, individual 2 in the market. And, and so the market demand is just that individual two's uh, demand. But, but for, for units zero through 24, because both person one and person two are enjoying them, we, we sum up uh, vertically. So, so the way you do this just mechanically is you say, oh, okay, well, just look for any two points on the line and you can connect those dots and, and you get the line. Well, the easiest two points to go for are where this kink is and where this intercept is. The intercept, well, what's the value at zero for person one? What's that at person for person two? Add them together, you get the market in intercept. And then for here, we notice that at 24, the value to person one is zero, but the value to person two is eight. So zero plus eight is eight. That point's there. And then we can just, you know, we know the x-intercept for person two is 36. Um, done. I'll, I'll We'll do a sample problem. I think I'll have time before uh, YouTube cuts me off. I... Uh, and then as far as, you know, once we calculate the demand curve, our usual rule um, is, is hold still. Marginal social cost and marginal social value. Where those two meet, there we have the optimal quantity. I meant to say that um, on my initial uh, graphic. I have a picture of a park in Appleton, Wisconsin. I, I end up in Appleton quite a lot. My wife's from that area, and we, you know, it's just clear that the citizens of Wisconsin in general and, and in Appleton in particular have chosen a higher level of public amenities than we have in Oregon. Their schools are all better. They have uh, smaller classes, longer school years, higher test scores, all that. Um, but but public parks, they have more parks. There's they have impeccable play structures. They're just all over the place. And, and you know, we in Oregon have made a, a different uh, set of choices as a political body. Our weather is a whole lot better, though, in the wintertime especially. Um, and in the summertime, too, frankly. So we, we get that benefit. All right, let's do problem one out of uh, the connect problems or the end of the chapter problems. I don't know that it's problem one connect, but I know it's problem one in the end of chapter problems. I've reproduced problem one um, it just in, in small because, um, be, because I need the space to draw, draw the graph. All right, so the, you can blow this up by looking at your own book. Let's first do um, find the demand curve for podunk, and, and we do this by summing vertically over the individual quantity. So let's do Smith first, and we notice that P equals 12 minus Q. I'm doing this sort of small. Y-intercept 12. X-intercept 12. Connect the dots. And we get Smith's demand curve. We do the same exercise for Jones. Now it's uh, 12 minus 2Q. So the slope's negative 2. So we get that same y-intercept of 12. I wanted to draw to scale here. I'm not sure I'm getting that quite right. Um, 12, and then we connect the dots. This was supposed to be a 6. And we get d sub j.
and then summing vertically, I'm going to have to move fast because I'm running out of time. Uh, this is not drawn to scale. I was trying to leave myself, a, this was Jones. This is market. And we see that the y-intercept uh, is of, of the market is 12 plus 12, 24. Sorry, I didn't get the scale right. And we see that up to a quantity of 6, both are in the game. Both are, are getting value from the park. So we'll 6. I think these were acres of parkland in, in this example. Um, oh, no, this is uh, hours of bro opera broadcast. Sorry. Uh, and then we, we see at a quantity of 6, Smith is still getting some value. Jones's quantity is 0 at 6. Smith's value is $6 per hour. So the market valuation at 6 is 6. So that's where that kink is. And then we see that Smith's value goes to 12. That's where that kink is. So this is the combined demand curve. And then they ask us uh, to calculate uh, what would the, be the optimal quantity. And, and the cost is constant at 15. This is the marginal social value. And so we can solve for this. When you do, you get three. I, I think I have time to show you that. We, we see that the equation for this segment of the line is 24. It's a y-axis of 24. There's a run of negative 18. Sorry, a rise of negative 18. It's rise over run, a run of positive 6. Negative 18 over 6 is negative 3. So we get P equals 24 minus 3q. We, P, we know, is $15 per hour. 15 equals 24 minus 3q. 3q then equals 9. Q equals 3. That's the optimum quantity.